this. Scotland and Germany recently booted GMOs out of their country, citing fear of GMO crops contaminating their food supplies and concern over putting their food and beverage industries in jeopardy. Now, Greece and Latvia are telling Monsanto exactly what they can do with their GMO crops. The tide is turning. A tipping point just became evident through new actions of two additional European countries who have had enough of the biotech strong arm. And the Africans used to love the West when they saw the Western medicine men, uh, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago. But now the African leaders say, we know you're stacking traits in there with your Terminator genetics and others that are going to end our agriculture. And the Africans are reading statements to shareholders from 10 years ago and more from Monsanto admitting the plan is a genetic monopoly. So the Africans understand we get seeds out of what we plant over and over again. You're conquering us with this. We don't want it. And then our media goes, dumb Africans don't want our free food. Well, yeah, because they take the vaccines and get sterilized. They've already experienced how wondrous it all is to be under this. They don't want to be destroyed. And they also attack the Argentinians because the Argentinian children would develop these massive tumors being around the Monsanto GMO soy fields and things like that. And they'd always say, oh, they're crazy. They're third world idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. The villagers, they believe in myths. They think their gods are doing it. Yeah, Study. They, they actually... They actually accuse them of mishandling their chemicals, right? Like mishandling their chemicals. Like, first of all, if the chemical is harmless, you if you miss it, I mean, it's just it's so ridiculous what they've done to an entire. Sure, the population truth is, it gets in the well water. It gets in the well water. Yeah. Yeah, and. Anthony, what was that part you're going to finish? Yeah, so this is a new study. I got a bunch of studies today. It seems like a new one comes out every day. Study, children exposed to GMO soy pesticides suffer serious genetic damage. A 2015 study has shown that children exposed to pesticides used to grow GM soy suffer serious genetic damage. Research for Wait a minute, you mean weed killer might not be good for my children? Yeah, who would have thought, right? Oh, you're crazy. You're, you're insane. The Argentinians are crazy. Researchers from the National University of Rio Cuarto, Cordoba, compared children who lived close to a GM soy field growing area in Argentina to children who lived in another city in Cordoba that was not adjacent to GM soy fields. Genetic damage in the group of exposed children was 44% higher than in the unexposed children. Living less than 500 meters from crops, routinely sprayed with glyphosate and other pesticides, they had serious, serious genetic damage. Amazing. And we're going to be back in the next segment and finish up with these news items. Before we do that, I wanted to have Vani Hari, the food babe, finish up, launching our new initiative last week, already having an effect. Last week, you wrote an article, Drudge picked it up. Uh, it had been out for a day. And then, and then they responded about the inhumane killing of the chickens. Another example there. They've gone from an arrogant wall of invincibility, Vani, to now really responding, uh, that is just so exciting. I guess Gandhi's right. First they ignore you, then they uh, laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. Vani, uh, in closing in the next few minutes, what else is on your radar and what can we do to get uh, the, the biggest, uh, you know, as you said, fast food chain out there in the U.S. at least, Subway, to get the antibiotics out of their meat? Yeah, you know, 23,000 people die every single year in the United States, 700,000 worldwide because of this issue. Because of superbugs, we're being exposed to it in our water, in our soil, and in our food. And we really have an obligation as consumers, as humans, to protect antibiotics so that when we want to have them, That's when right. we want to use them to fight off super or any type of bugs— we should be able to do that. And right now, we're in situations where that's just not possible. A million Americans are affected every single year by this issue. My dad personally was affected by this issue, was, you know, was um, affected by antibiotic-resistant bacteria. By the way, when you use that number, you're, you're using their number. I mean, it's a lot higher than that. Yeah, well, yeah, I am using their number. So who really knows what the real figure is and what they might be hiding from us. But I'll tell you this, you know, I was talking to the former general of the U.S. Army, Wesley Clark, at uh, the Democratic National Convention a few years ago. And he said to me, I said to him, you know, what's the biggest food issue for you? And this is a U.S. Army guy, right? Like, yeah, smart guy. You, know, you expect some like basic kind of response. But he said it's this issue. He said that if we don't address this, this could wipe out the human race. And that is really the I truth. Agree. And so we all need to go ask Subway to submit a formal policy, first of all, to, to open up the discussion so that we can learn about what they're doing because they're they're making these very vague statements that, you know, make us cautiously optimistic that they are, are, are listening, but we really need to see a formal statement like their competitors. We need to see a capitulation to life.
and join the life wing, not the death wing. Food Babe, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. We'll be back. Stay with us. Fourth hour.